what's up guys? This is the Braveman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as Louisiana. So to round off where we left off, uh, we've... Well, the British have declared war on us once more. And they are blockading our ports and reducing our trade income. So we have one stack deployed here near Quebec, which we think, I'm pretty sure the garrison will be able to deal with. But I am bringing up Gautier Brissot to move up to Montreal, just in case... Just in case we're so effective at pushing them off, they decide to go for, for uh, Montreal. But they may even decide to go to Montreal anyway. So we've got that to deal with. Obviously we've got some fleets knocking about. We've also got this British stack up here under Gareth Worthington. And uh, Theodore, old Teddy's going to go up. He's moving up there to intercept wherever he's going to decide to go. He may go for Fort Nashwack, but he may push down uh, this coastal path here. I do want to bring war to Britain, so right now we've got a fleet blockading us at the Bahamas. And we do have an army here at Antigua, but we're very much waiting on uh, the region to chill out. Because right now it's negative seven. At the ready. Negative seven public order, now it's down to minus three. So one more turn should do it. Yes. Then we can safely move this fleet over and we can hit Port Royal. And we can hit Curacao and knock them out. We do. We are still at war with the French down here. So we're trying to uh, prevent their deployment of troops to the continent. But I suspect we're probably going to have another attack or another navy coming along. We are growing our own navy. It's a selection of fourth rates, to be honest. Yeah, if I was confident, if I was a good naval battle person, I'd probably do that. But I'm not, so I'm not going to, especially as they're all in full strength because those second rates do a really good broadside so we're running 12,000 a turn which isn't a, which isn't um, a huge amount but it's not uh, it's not a tiny amount either and especially as we are actually commanding quite a lot of forces so I'm not overly concerned and we've also taken here on territory so we need to march but well, when these guys are replenished we need to march these guys up to York factory to go and knock out the Huron once and for all. Or more likely, they'll, they'll, they'll march to Moose Factory and then travel by ship. Because this will take quite a few turns passing through the wilderness with no roads. As far as technology goes, I'd rather you probably go for Copper Bottoms rather than Grape Shot. Because I don't really use Grape Shot we're not so worried about going down the Reform Naval Administration yet. I think this overall this is a pretty good this is a pretty good breakdown. So the question is when well when Baton Rouge gets developed, we pretty much need to turn that into a school. Um, because this is our capital region, obviously we need a university in our capital to unlock modern a modern university. So we need Baton Rouge to grow and develop, and there are no other towns that grow. Oh no there is, Little Rock. Well whichever one of these grows first, they'll become a school then the other will become a happiness uh, building. But without further ado, I think we better just hit the end turn and watch the British do what they're going to do. The Spanish? Oh, there is the Brits are attacking the Spanish. I thought the Spanish were uh, I thought the Spanish were going to attack. Ooh. Okay. I would have expected them to uh, maybe have done that first so they could kill my ship. As is, I'm going to sail my ship back into the port to make sure it doesn't die. And that may cause the French or the British to try and respond to the ship. Well, so the idea is if I put my ship back in the port, will the British army turn around and push my army back out of the port? And then I could. It's quite a a good way to chip away some of their movement points. It's a bit of bait to try and see if I can just waste some of their movement. Don't worry, Cherokee. Your time will come too. So we've got a raid. So this guy's going to go back in. So we've got Mr. Worthington. He may take Montreal before we can get there. Even though we do have 
metal roads, still quite a time-consuming experience, but we do have a garrison at Quebec, so they're going to struggle to take the region, or to take the city, because A, it's defended with fortifications, and we've also got a pretty good garrison inside, so these guys are probably going to go down. Well, actually, because they abandoned our uh, the blockade of our ports, we actually earned, earned some cash that turn. To sink some of that into growing up our navy. So again, we've got two different ships. The only difference is this one's slightly better. The left-hand one's slightly better um, uh, accuracy and hull strength. Oh no, this guy, so the right-hand one's got a slightly better accuracy and slightly less hull strength, for whatever reason. I think I'd probably go for the one that has better firepower. So let's get some second rates on the go. Maybe a third rate to provide some cheaper support. Don't want to upgrade this school yet. I do want to upgrade some of the Huron Territory buildings in order to make them happier so that when we leave they don't rebel massively. So if I leave the city, yeah, they're negative 14. So no, no villages are growing, although how many do you have? Long lack. That would be handy to turn them into a religious school, because I've only got the one priest at the moment. He's down here converting Albany, although that's maybe not quite as much of a priority now. Start to convert for the Delphia, because Philadelphia is 100% Protestant. Or at least Albany is now. <laughs> it's actually still near as damn it, 100% Protestant. Okay. So we've got some good intelligence on the Pueblo Nations. So there's that British... F well, there's one British fleet. They've been pecked at. I could potentially try and grab them, but I'm not so bothered about that. So now, if I move this army out of Antigua and put the militia in... There we go. They are now happy with us. So we can stop recruiting militia. Let's take... One fifth rate out before we embark the troops. And then let's sail them over to Port Jamaica to go hit the British. Oh no, they're going to stop us, eh? Ready for action. Harvesting supplies. Could blockade them. But I do want more port capacity. I think I may as well recruit the Great Arsenal just to unlock the... I didn't even unlock anything. In fact, I may probably then want to just... Yeah, actually, there's not really a huge amount I want to buy. Although it might be useful next turn, when I get the next uh, Weaver, Weaver's Cottage building. Although, actually, it's not. Oh, no, we're on to the next stage, aren't we? Power loom and steam engine is the order of the day. But we're a ways away from steam engine yet, because we don't have Wealth of Nations. Our agent got detected, so that's going to annoy them a little bit. Let's see if there's anyone else we can trade with. Fortunately, we're both at war with two major colonial powers. Russia hates us, but if they want to start anything, I'm more than happy to send over a contingent to go take them out. So Theodore, you can also move up. Because I expect we're either going to get attacked... We're well, probably going to get attacked at Montreal and Quebec next turn. If I had to bet... Yeah, one thing I can do. I suppose it's a bit of a waste of money now. Was recruit a ship up here at Rupert's Land. But if it's going to take a few turns to get these guys to chill out, then probably not too much I can really do. I mean, you know, there's no point building a ship to have it just sit there 
and take up money take up um, gold to keep it well to keep it existing to keep it supplied um well i know it's not going to do anything it seems a bit of a waste of money but there we are okay let's just hit end turn Yes, you can blockade my individual ports, but you know I'm coming after you, Britain. <laughs> they really can't make their minds up what they're going to do. And yes, I will intercept your army, Jamaica. Let's do this. Let's start to chip away at... Uh, start to chip away at the British colonial machine and become colonials, colonials ourselves. So we are going to have some shenanigans at play when it comes to deploying, because the enemy is deploying. The enemy will be arriving from different angles, so I don't want to deploy all of my troops. Let's pick something fairly uncontroversial. I've got three infantry units and two batteries of artillery ready to respond to whatever happens. I knew it. So we've got enemy cavalry and we've got enemy infantry behind us. I'm sure these guys are running because ahead of us I'm not too bothered about the uh, well I'm not bothered about the British at all in this in this particular battle. them route. Let's intercept their cavalry with ours from two directions. The Royal Escosse are going to have to drop into square formation. My artillery focus on dropping canister shot into the head of the column. my cavalry onwards. Let's make sure we're pivoting our line appropriately. So I want to smash these guys into the buccaneers. I do appreciate there is an enemy threat nearby. Enemy cavalry has been dealt with. Let's direct the artillery fire from our support batteries. Colonial lights charging in again. Let's charge one of them in. Charge one of my cavalry units in. Let's get the other to flank around and get ready to be to show up behind them. Cavalry go and engage the horse artillery. Run my infantry up onto the hill. So you charge in there. Just get in there then. So the enemies at the front have been broken to. Push up our men. It's the round shot because the enemy is now out of 
canister range and actually if they're going to switch to round shot we can probably afford to straighten up our line like so. Keep my artillery here engaging. I don't know, keep let's, okay, let's unlimber the right hand. Let's limber up the right hand limber. What I'd like is for these guys to route. So I can send one of my cavalry units to chase down this guy. You have colonial lines come back, so let's target them with one of our flank companies of artillery. The front, the main front is broken. You guys drop into square to fire on the general as he flanks around. Okay, everyone swarm this line infantry unit. My men are going to get cut down. My cavalrymen are going down. But they're going to be supported by Grenadiers. These men are going to absolutely nail this colonial line of foot unit. Death all around. Caver my Grenadiers are probably going to take some of that cavalry charge. Push up the line. Can you guys go after that colonial unit? You gonna do is pack this in. You guys go after that colonial unit, you guys finish these guys off. Let's engage the general's bodyguard. No, let's not engage the general's bodyguard. The general's dead. Good stuff. I run my cavalry over, but I doubt they'll be. Uh, they'll stick around long enough. Getting some good kills, but yeah, they're right at the back of the map, so they're going to retreat quite easily. Except for the artillery, actually, you might. May actually have a shot at killing those guns. Yes, those guns are ours. Good stuff. That's Jamaica successfully damaged. I say damaged. Done a lot of damage here. Look at that. Nearly 4 to 1. Roughly 4 to 1. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, the French are gathering more forces. But soon we will see them off as well. So the best way to defend these Caribbean islands usually isn't to build walls and fortify the hell out of things it's usually to just have one army stationed on one of the islands and they just respond so the Turkish rebels or the Turkish Republican rebels they, they arose for a moment um, yeah so what I was saying was the idea that it's not really personally it's not worth building walls around Jamaica the Bahamas the Windward and Leeward Islands, it's not worth doing. If they're already there, then that's fine. But there's no point in building them yourself. 
because the AI will attack them and it's incredibly expensive to build good, gar good garrisons around all of them. If after a while the AI seems to clearly point out it has a favour, a preference for a certain one, that's a different story. Like in Quebec, where I built walls, for example. I built walls around Quebec because the AI tried multiple times to attack it. So I built walls, and now I've got walls. The British have landed, and they've not actually um, completed the attack. They're actually just kind of waiting what to do. So much so, I've got two armies here ready to destroy them. So these guys are going to wait here. Any further orders? We may even take up the position of the fort. First of all, actually, let's check. I mean, Britain's raiding us with a big, with a big fleet. Lots of second-rate ships on the line. Obviously, they've raided some of our stuff, but we'll soon take care of them. We've got the punch card loom, which is really good, because then that'll mean our income starts to really go through the roof. But the Brits are raiding a bunch of our trade, which is frustrating. A couple of governor's mansions have been built. Ah, uh, yes, I forgot about these chaps up here in in uh, Newfoundland. Yeah, you're waiting for uh, new or more men to arrive. Well, not more men, but you know, you need you need a. Your problem was unit variety, so you want two, maybe three cavalry. Three cavalry for a start. So let's get. Okay, let's get heavy in two lights, because we're fighting in the Americas. Let's get another gun. Then maybe actually after build a great arsenal, I'll pick up, start building and rolling out howitzers to my armies. Our agent's there. You're currently just sat there doing nothing. Manufactory owner, research points for industrial technologies too. So Nida has got better at researching industrial tech. Awesome. Instead, you're going to get for puddling furnace, um, just because it's a three-turn, a three-turn technology for an 18% wealth in metalworking, which is pretty good. It reduces the cost of artillery, so especially if I'm going to start rolling out howitzers across the board. Philip Babuff, frontiersman, plus one to command and fighting in the Americas, and an aide de camp. Okay, first of all, take this army. Uh, I wasn't expect. I was expecting these guys to maybe get involved. So this might be. Yeah, it's got to be an auto. This one. So let's take you guys out to go finish off Darren Ramsey. Yeah. Damn, that's a lot of. Philip lost a lot of men. Let's get you guys into the port. But the main reason why I wanted to auto those was because I want to come up here. Come after and kill. Attack Gareth Worthington. So I've got a reinforcing army, but I'm probably not going to need it. Let's kill them. So we've got both these British armies to chase off. I've got Jamaica. I'm going to go take Curacao. Or, you know, the army that's taken Jamaica is going to go take Curacao, then go and invade French-held... South America, but of these armies, they may go to Europe and they may start to uh, cause some problems for our friends. So where's our... Okay, you're there. Okay, I'd probably like some grenadiers on this flank as well. Our troop, put some troops on the left to advance through the town. Don't worry, I haven't forgot. I've got some of these guys up here, so they're gonna. I'm gonna push on the right flank. So that's gonna be where my cavalry are based. With some skirmishes. Let's 
group. He's men forward. Obviously, my general, go away. I don't want him sat behind their lines. Probably want you something more like that. I can't. See, it doesn't show me I can do it, but then it suddenly decides to say that I can. So then my gun's up on here. You guys push, push up to a better position. So the job of that cavalry is just to sit there, not ex not to provoke, not to provide an enticement of the enemy. So they've got a lot of men pushing the left, so I need to push the right quite aggressively. If I push the right aggressively, then that'll force the AI to redeploy. I think really they're trying to prevent their forces from getting trapped. Fair enough, and by God, we've done a devastating job on their uh, artillery. So these cavalry can swarm the buccaneers. Well, I mean, engage that colonial line. Not quite sure what you're expecting to do. You guys can push down a bit further, a bit further, actually. Stretch this line a little bit to defend the flank. So who's that coming up to say hello? Oh, nothing. Okay, you men run. Push these guys up to hold the centre. Okay, we've got a guy on the unit on the flank, you guys drop into square. These guys drop into square to provide support. You guys can line up to engage. So these guys need to push up here to push around the top of the hill. So let's run my cavalry up first. Now you guys can get involved. So the light horse so the charge has broadly been with, withheld, or been, uh, it's been withstanded or withstood. So let's get these chaps out of square. Oh no you don't, get back in. So I'm meant to bypass the militia fairly quickly. In order to provide a flanking fire opportunity against these guys behind the uh, the hill. Stop bombarding them. Oh, they're so done. Dragoons have dismounted, which is which is quite convenient.
push the cavalry around to try and intercept the colonial light before they engage. So the job of these guys is just to provide fire into this combat because right now this militia is going to die. There's no, there's no, there's nothing to. We can't stop that. Not militia. This colonial line is was going to die. So all we can do is provide some blocking troops. Good. Looks like they've abandoned their fortified position, which is exactly what I wanted. So let's keep my infantry moving. So I thought the drunk colonial light cavalry is drunk on glory. Quite like my cavalry. Charging on. We want them to charge on to keep making room for the... Keep making room for the following... Infantry. And it's worked. So these men just charge on, form a new line. Back there. Oh, my skirmishes are all the way back there. They've missed the entire show. So let's get some infantry in there just to start to take out the uh, cavalry. That have countercharged us. Because that was a brilliant bit of momentum for my cavalry there. It looks like, though, that we're going to gain some tremendous momentum. Colonial lights stay behind. Just so they don't interfere so much with my onward cavalry charges. You guys cannot hold your fire at will. Got the glorious. Louisiana cavalry cannot be withstood. Right, no. We just pushed our way around this map entirely. Yes, the enemy general. I suppose you better try and actually kill him. Let's bring one of these cavalry units across. Here is Mon General. Let's get him involved in this. In this slaughter. Won't be long before the general falls. It's important to keep kicking, or to keep clicking once they've routed, because the cavalry, the cavalry gets mixed in quite a lot during these sort of fights. There we go. We actually managed to get the general. So we definitely want to carry on, because the British have routed. You're after them. Oh, it doesn't really matter now. Let's 
speed up time. Such beautiful slaughter. Oh, no, cuirassiers. Some cuirassiers came in. When our infantry routed, I forgot about that. Okay, one of you redeploy. Ah, oh, they all got away. Wait, there's one more unit. Ah, oh, they got away. Damn. That's a lovely, decisive victory. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. 800 men left, and obviously they route across the river. So these guys replenish with what they can. My men, sans artillery, chase down Mr. Beardsley. Obviously, some of them must survive. Because that is the way the AI works. Still, the artillery can now go to join up with the general. And this guy's job is to chase down these roaming cavalrymen. Yes, my lord. And Gautier, your job is to move up. Good stuff. But I think that's probably a good time to end the episode because that's quite a decent battle there. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you next time for the continued adventures of Louisiana. Cheers, everyone.